Hello, Tangers and Gamers. Momentary Genius here back with, for the first time, a part two to an I Can't Tank This and featuring the Object 120. If you're asking yourself why this happened, well, after watching some recent, well, videos of other content creators for World of Tanks console and they lovingly praise the Object 120, especially its gun and its hard-hitting gun, capable of doing 800 damage in Era 2. I, having biased thoughts of how this is really just a weak tank, the definition of a glass cannon, I decided to revisit it. And when I revisit it, I realized something, that I was so frustrated by it when I first played through it, that all I did was merely go for just completely upgrade it and get elite status but not put any silver into it so i didn't upgrade anything and sometimes more alex well, more often not actually than just sometimes a lot of the tech tree tanks need upgrades to actually get better so i did just that and I upgraded everything. I had the silver. And you will see the byproducts of some of this. I have four clips because the first two, well, realistically, all throughout, it's a struggle with this tank. So the first two clips show the weak, this tank at its weakest, while the last two show it at its strongest. Now, I'd like you to just pay attention to a few things. One, please note how readily, easily I'm penetrating these FV4211s. That'll come up later. Secondly, let's talk stats. And so there's some specific, there's some specific numbers I want you to pay attention to. Now, and it's mostly about this lovely gun, this 150.2 millimeter rifle gun. It has, at 100 meters, on its standard IMO, 398 pen, 480 on heat, and 150 on HE. I only run standard and HE, HE just in case I come across any Wolverines. And at 500 meters, the penetration for the standard round goes down to 386, so not a lot. And at almost 400 pen, this is pretty good for Era 2. Realistically, aside from the atrocious armor, I would like to see the, right now, with a, I do not have all nine perks unlocked for my commander, that my accuracy is at 0.34. Now, if you'd like to see a part three, where not only have I upgraded, I have a fully upgraded Object 120, but I also have a fully perked out commander. By all means, let me know in the comments. Now, we're losing here on Halbron, and I'm about to run into the issue as been through this whole thing. I finding a good spot for this tank that is so big yet has low concealment which I'll be working on to get lower because yes there's true vision yes this is a big tank but getting your concealment down at least it allows you a little bit of luck in not having five tanks spot you and shoot at you just one from a distance without detecting you that can help save your butt because you need all the help you can to save your butt because in a lot of cases once you fired off this big gun you're detected and you're targeted because at the beginning of a game the Object 120's gun, when combined with um, other tanks' concentrated fire, yes, absolutely, you can melt that. 
but you have no armor. So at any point during the match, if you're detected, you will we'll be removed quickly. And as you saw there, the teamwork and a failing team on my part was my doom. But I did manage 8,252 damage. I've kind of gotten used to that. Getting either being taken out very quickly and getting nothing accomplished or doing rather significant damage but not winning. It's just how it, this quirk of this thing, it's balanced. I will say that. Unlike its, its Tehran equivalent in World War II or I guess for future video debate, I'll weigh in on the FE 4005 Stage 257, which some people compare this to in that the FE 4007 doesn't work in Era 2, it's too powerful, it needs to be brought to Era 2. I don't think these people have played the Object 120 because that would give them a good idea of how inadequate the FE 4007 would be in Era 2, but I'll get to that later on in a future video. <sighs> Siegfried Line. Not a map for a tank this big and is the definition of a tank destroyer. So what I'm trying to do here is just get to this little corner and get some shots in while also detecting and having something for a cover. I don't want to brawl. But at the same time, I can't go out into the open field because I'm big. Yes, I can move, but there's not a lot of cover out there. And that just translates to me being easily pinned down. Now, remember earlier how I was doing so well against FE 4000, FE 4211s? This match changes that dynamic. This match has that old little nefarious RNG not in your favor, which a lot of players eventually notice and complain about. Now, granted, I should have demolished some walls so I wasn't shooting so high onto the well-armored turret. But later on in the match, you'll kind of see the FE-4002-11's armor and RNG chicanery really become obnoxious. I'm trying to hit to the right of the little Coppola, kind of successfully do, but this is again, this it's the map that doesn't really work with this tank, so I'm struggling with that, and when you're struggling like this, it's where your team is necessary. This is Object 120. When your team is good and is complementary to your type of tank, you can do really well and not get left behind and end up with zero damage. Well, little damage, not zero. But if your team is doing too well, you can sort of find yourself outmatched by faster firing tanks and faster tanks. And now we see some more of the whole, yep, the FP-4000 armor living up to its just living up to his reputation while also realizing we have a herd practically of FE 4000 4211 excuse me wow can't uh, I hate that tank so much it just makes my brain shut off I'm so tired of the FE 4000 now watch here uh, okay I wasn't quite flat shot it was a bit angled so maybe that's why, but I thought it was far enough back to where that wouldn't matter. Again, at that range, 398 pounds. Waste my shot on that, and now I'm getting more incoming fire from another FP4000. Now watch this. Auto lock. I shouldn't have. I bounce in the rear. I do a quick peek. 
And if you look just closely enough, my round just hit the bottom of that spare track part on the FE4000 level. Now, in a bit of a change of pace, instead of looking at the armor profile of the Object 120, I'm going to look at the FE4000 211. Because I was really flummoxed by that. And while we have a moment, if you like this style of review and critique, by all means, like and subscribe. Now, I'm looking at the rear because I know where my round hit. And as it turns out, RNG combined with a hull of 69 millimeters, an equipment box that rates at 19 millimeters of armor, and that extra track at 30 equaling 118 millimeters of total armor thickness, I guess. I guess that's space armor. With RNG meant, at that range, 398 pen meant absolutely nothing. Maybe I should have shot HE. But that match combined with a number of FE4011s just was set the Object 120 up for failure. Now, on to better matches. Emphasis on the air quotes. Here we are in Dragon Ridge. If you've watched any of my camping videos, you'll know this is a map I usually camp on, especially at this spawn. And yep, we're gonna take the Object 120 up to the top of the hill, and we're gonna do some sniping slash camping, i.e. use the FP4, <laughs> sorry, the Object 120 uh, in a traditional um, tank destroyer role. Now, this, what worked in my favor, but didn't work in favor of my team was, this is a bot heavy match. I noticed that first when I was looking at that T63 HG there, and it was like, ooh, okay, we got bots. That's gonna be either good for me or bad for me. But I gotta work with what I got. Now, I'm taking up this position on the hill I was really hoping to just shoot across the valley because with only five degrees of gun depression, maybe a little bit more if I have it off the rear, which with a tank where the engine is in the front and the turret in the back is you actually kind of want to find yourself backing into firing positions. That way you can exit out of them quickly because your forward speed is going to be faster than your reverse speed. So now I'm just trying to find targets. And on, I, on review of this, I go back and forth. If, again, this is a tank where if you find a position that sort of works or you think will eventually work towards that middle long match, you don't wanna move because you're big and the most armor you have is in your turret at 30 millimeters. I have been penetrated by, yeah, probably the BMP2 was using the premium, but from across maps, I have taken damage from the BMP's autocannon. And the only time I can block any damage safely is when it's a BMP autocannon from across the map. So finding cover or a good position to where you won't be detected or spotted, you don't really want to leave it in this tank unless your team has swung the match in your favor and they're in front of you because you're just that easy a target everyone will target you yes with fully upgraded you have at least something resembling okay health at 2250 but that can just melt so quickly and forget atgms you're done you'll easily lose a thousand on that 
if you're lucky or else you'll just be taken out completely and of course shared an HE round same difference as the missiles it's like please maybe you'll bounce and you're really hoping for a miss now I'm still holding my position and it's at this stage I was thinking maybe I should have moved maybe I should have done something but we're past that point now it's down to six I'm just hoping my team will not go all the way over the top of that hill so they can act as spotting as the enemy team advances onto our capture but it's not looking that way and the foliage is not helping it's I really need tanks to be detected so I can engage with them because unless they're in the middle of that field even if they're in the middle of the field I'll be able to see them, but I may not be able to fire on them because of this tank's lack of gun depression unless I back or put my tank really far forward and really expose it. I'm just catching glimpses and pieces of enemy tanks. Meanwhile, it looks like my team's gonna try for capture, but when you have that combination of bots and humes, it's... it's really hard to predict what the heck's gonna go on thankfully something's been detected i am able to remove a tank out of our way goodbye my gosh. and now they're gone again into the foliage they're there somewhere but i can't see again they're blending in too well thankfully this t72m1 sadly full health is detected by me and is in the open but again I've got to make that call of how far out do I want to expose myself because once I fire my that big old boom snout, snout of mine, I'm probably going to be lit up. Especially if I back up because I'm just, just on the edge of my detection range. But at least I know where one, one tank is. Actually two because they're in our capture. We have that T-55 Enigma unfortunately taking cover and I can't do anything and it's here I'm actually gonna rack up some pretty decent damage because I'm able to sort of farm that T72 M1 and although it's not a horrible reload the object 120 reload is a bit on the slower side but if you're used to T72s and T62s you kinda you've learned to live with it now again, we're seeing, it would be really nice at some point to get a thousand damage shot, have that real chance for ammo rack, but with this gun, and it's the RNG, it really is, it's just, you, 800, maybe 900, despite the fact that, yeah, you could do almost a little over a thousand, but you just never really you get close, but never enough to make it matter. And with fewer and fewer of my team here, I can do big damage, but there's not enough of my team to capitalize on it. So I'm now stuck in this position. And hope isn't all lost because it's four to four. But yeah, I'm full health, but it doesn't take a lot to remove that health from my tank so I'm doing all I can to be concealed try to detect and engage all from the top of this hill with a tank with no gun depression it is nerve-wracking and now I'm hoping that the bots on my team get smart and the bots and the enemy team get stupid and it sort of works that way but yeah two to four it's basically now I need to find a good spot to engage right now I'm just trying to cover my last remaining teammate because he's in an enigma and he's got armor but he's not doing so well HP wise so I just need him to deck and of course he's up 
in the little village where there's cover and I really can't get a good line. And again, I I'm just protecting myself till the end because it's now, can I just outsmart everyone else? But I've got medium tanks, leopards. There's still a T-70M1. There's an uh, M3113. That actually is my biggest concern because that's a smaller tank destroyer with good mobility and it shoots heat, not quite the most accurate gun, but again, anything will penetrate my tank. And he's got a faster reel. It's one of those things of like, in what could be a hunting party, I am screwed. And that's, but if they're gonna hunt for me, at least they're gonna hunt for me or they're gonna go for capture. And maybe one person will capture or one bot. And yep, look at that. Someone's capturing it while the others go hunting. And fortunately, it's two. I try, I try to snapshot into that M113. It misses and now I'm not liking that because that's a human player and that means they can adapt. So now I'm pretty certain I'm surrounded and I'm in a corner. Now it's basically just shoot. And thankfully, as you can see by this T-72, I did get a stupid bot and started doing bot things, kind of just sitting there and rotating. So thankfully the other bot on capture didn't move to engage with me. Yay. But that M113 isn't there and the other medium, the leopard, I believe it is, isn't there either. So the human players are moving, which means all I can do is just try to get, eliminate as many threats as possible, as quickly as possible. And man, wasn't it great that I just tracked that T-72 in place instead of just taking it out with this last little bit of health. So the T-59 enigma rams me. Thankfully, I know where to shoot, take it out. Now I'm a one shot for everything. I see that the T-71 one's, or T-72's turret is turned to the side so I can slam a shot easily into that. Two to one. Okay. Hope has now been dashed. There's the M113. Yep. That, like I said, was a good match. Almost 10,000 damage and five destroyed, but if we weren't on Dragon Ridge with and still, but still the bots, I think I could have done well. Like, we could have won. But Dragon Ridge is a real, real bitch of a map. It is. And yeah, it was a bot heavy match, but no real bot farming per se, because we lost. Now into Dustful. This is a map that can work in my favor. There's open areas, but plenty of cover. It just depends on team movement. And normally I would make a straight beeline for the center of town, but with such a big tank and going to the town, that whole brawling in cities is just not a smart move. So I decided to try to take off position here on the end of the bridge to try to just snipe across as the enemy goes around and heads for the roads. And I realize, and this will be a small theme, of really needing to aim higher above walls than I would normally think I would. But I underestimate, or I'm not familiar with the size of 150 
.2 millimeter round. I don't... So at least I was able to, I believe that was an M68 one, I think, that I at least slammed around into. I take one more peek. Yeah, I'm not gonna try pixel sniping that FE4211's turret as it's moving and just, if I'm lucky, I'll just watch it bounce. So I save my round for someone else. That someone else, I believe, is, yes, a enemy object 120. I definitely want to take him out, at least for the sake of marks, because eliminating him means it's easier for me to increase the mark of excellence on my tank, which isn't that hard to do on a tank that very few people like to play anymore. It had its moment when it first came out, and even the Super Unicoms have moved on. You can find their old videos on YouTube, but it's it's a hard tank to love. You, like I said, some people really do love it because you have that hard-hitting gun, but mm, it doesn't work in a lot of situations. It doesn't have a lot of flexibility. And once you've been in the tank with a fast firing boom now, or you have any experience with missiles, you're like, yeah, this is the best tank destroyer, not the Object 120. But thankfully, I was able to detect and catch out an enemy Tehran here. Unfortunately, they didn't realize too late how no one of their comrades were in the town and we had taken it completely so I get my first kill and lo and behold I don't know how I know I bemoaned the armor here but I just blocked 460 damage when the angles are right the RNG is in your favor it's it's hard to know when that is though with this tank so now I am in a semi-comfortable sniping position, but it's a position you don't want to be sitting still for too long because you have a fat head at the very least. There's a WZ-122. I definitely want to do all I can to take that out because, again, that multi-weapon system is lethal to an Object 120. Those missiles hurt. And if they can track me with their cannon and slam a missile into me, I'm, I'm going to be in the garage a lot sooner than I want to be. So we see an FE-4211 and other tanks moving along the road out in the open somewhat. So I try to see what I can do. Ally accomplishes bouncing off a turret. I'm reversing here to try to get a better line of sight on tanks and sort of not really get a good shot on the F-4211. I wish I'd waited half a second so that way my shot would have landed farther to the rear where there's a little bit less armor and hope for the best there. But we have most of the enemy is now along the road, along the sea line. I still can't shoot over or through a wall even with 398 pen at point blank range but at least I get some spotting damage and assists so yay another roll of a tank to short is also good for detecting the enemy so boosting that view range could prove advantageous especially when you don't want to get detected yourself and we win by capture and it's an epic victory and I get first place. Again, like I said, this is a good match in the Object 120. Do I recommend it for new players? No. And most experienced players move on from it. But I like quirky tanks and sometimes, if I'm lucky, that big boom snout does feel good. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you keep the tracks on the ground and RNGs in favor. Hope to see you in the next one. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.